I'm a little scared for it. it makes my, my armpit sweaty because I just, you know, haven't had good luck with relationships ever. You are valuable. You are an important person. You deserve to live a happy, fulfilled life. Hi, it's Jessica Nicole Dickerson, aka JD, and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Pride Month recommendations, what my TBR is, and a little bit of my coming out story because I feel like I talk about how I'm ace on my channel, but I really don't tell you my experience coming out. And yeah, I figured it's time to be vulnerable and share. <laughs> I will be starting off with my TBR, so I will be participating in Pride Readathon. I believe that's what it's called. I will link the Twitter down below. There's a little bingo board, and I have four aims for completing the bingo board. The first one is to read a memoir, and the reason also I'm doing the bingo board is because it's going to challenge me to read books that I normally maybe wouldn't have read, like a memoir. I don't remember the last time I read one besides maybe Michelle Obama. I need to expand on that. But the one I am going to be reading is Black Boy Out of Time. This is a memoir and it's currently available on Kindle Unlimited, the audiobook as well as the ebook. So I highly recommend you guys checking it out too. I mean, I haven't read it, but I would recommend it because it's a memoir and it's about a boy who is queer growing up in Chicago dealing with all those things. So if you are looking for a book that is easily accessible, Kindle Unlimited is kind of more accessible than not but I'm very much looking forward to this. I love the fact that it's available on an audiobook because it means I will actually get it read. And who doesn't love a coming of age story? I'm really looking forward to this person's interpretation of their queerness. It's every story is always so eye-opening and I'm really looking forward to it. The next book I am going to read, the challenge goes for read a book that is shorter than an average book I believe. That's what it is, but I will be reading Sasha Masha, which is a book about a person who is transitioning. In the the description, it does mention that this person doesn't think their name is Alex anymore, if they think it's Sasha Masha, which is the title of the book. And it's all about the transitioning process. I'm really interested to read from an own voice author about this. I definitely need to expand my trans repertoire, 100%. Same with non-binary. So if you guys have good recommendations, leave them down below. The next book I want to pick up is The Taking of Jake Libenstein. So this is actually an arc. It doesn't come out till July. So I'm hoping to read it during Pride Month. Get a good, um, what's gonna call it? Review up? Yes, that's what it's called. On my Goodreads account and hype this guy up. So this will be reading something that is intersectional because he is black and gay. And I believe see ghosts. Does that make you intersectional? I think so, but maybe not. The first sentence of this is, I'd hate to be the kid that died in PE class. <laughs> I hate that too, that sounds real embarrassing. I'm so excited to read this. It is a debut book for this author and I have a really good feeling about it. Just from that first sentence and the synopsis alone, I'm sold and I hope you are too. The last box from the bingo board that I want to check off is read a book that from a underrepresented group. So for that, I am going to be reading not that one. <laughs> Loveless by Alyssa Olsman. Alice Olsman? I don't know why I said Alyssa. Scratch that. Alice Olsman. And I believe, I know this book is about asexuality, which party over here, that's what I am. Um, so I'm really interested to see this. I also recently read Let's Talk About Love, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. I feel that asexuality is considered an underrepresented group. I have heard of a few books that do have ace characters, but it's just, I feel like underrepresented, especially in like media, not just in books, but like on TV shows, we always be showing characters banging left and right. And I loved like in Sex Education, Little Detour, how they had one asexual character in it because I think it's just, you need to show all the people, like not everyone is thinking about sex. Not everyone wants that in their life. So to have and show characters that think that way, beautiful. So yeah, I will be reading Loveless. And I am also reading this for the Krusty Book Club because I will be on the live show this month, which is so heartwarming. I love Chanel so much. So I will leave her channel down below. Um, yeah, but we're gonna be reading this. And I also managed to get this really beautiful cover. There were literally three separate couples sitting around the fire making out, like some sort of organized kissing orgy. And half of me was like, ew. And the other half was like, wow, I sure wish that was me. I feel like I'm gonna deeply, deeply connect with this book. And I'm looking forward to it. 
a few more books that I want to read that have nothing to do with the little bingo board. Firstly being Trouble Girls by I think what is the Julia Lynn Rubin. So this actually came out at the end. Oh, it's coming out at the beginning of June. So I'm hoping to read this and get a review up for it. This is about two girls who are lesbians. So this book is a queer reimagining of Thelma and Louise with the Riverdale aesthetic, which I'm here for. Because we all know Riverdale's aesthetic is awesome, but the writing isn't. So hopefully this doesn't do that to us. I have high expectations. The first sentence is... The diner's full of hogs today. Hogs. Hog men. That's what I call them. <laughs> so I think this is just going to be really interesting and really fun. Love on the dark side of freedom last book I am going to try and read and yes you should be surprised I'm keeping my TBR not too ambitious I think I'm trying to read six books yeah six books which I think is way more reasonable than any TBR I've ever set so it'd be hilarious if I still don't reach this goal but hopefully I can we can hope the next book is perfect on paper by Sophia Gonzalez I read only mostly devastated which i loved it was a grace retelling this one is about a girl who gives love advice through a locker like a locker system people leave notes she replies it's very interesting because she also doesn't have her love life together so why is she giving advice we don't know maybe she's just not good at taking her own advice the main character is bi and i have heard a lot of commotion about this book talking about um bi phobia or bi erasure so i'm really interested to read more about that and support the author because I really enjoyed her first book. The first sentence is... Everyone in school knows about Locker 89. The locker at the bottom right, at the end of the hall, near the science labs. That's the first sentence. But I'm, I'm assuming that's the locker that all the gossip kind of goes through. Ooh. So that's my little TBR that I can totally reach. And plus the two books that I have available on audio. I'm hyped for Pride. It's going to be such a fun month. Quickly, I wanted to get into some recommendations and then my coming out story. So here I have three books that I love and think about so much. And first, I will start with this book. I will also talk more about it in my wrap-up if you are interested. But that is Yesterday is History by Kosoko Jackson. So if you are looking for a contemporary that will hit you in the feels, still have a cute romance that's like believable and fun with a little sprinkle of a uh, little science fiction because there's time travel in this i would highly recommend this the writing and the main character it was just all so good it was crafted in such a beautiful way and this is a debut book so i'm like pff, blown away because it was just everything i wanted reading this and i'm really sad that not as many people are talking about this so this does feature a gay main character and he is experiencing love something i love about this is that there's not really a love triangle in this but there is multiple partners that he is infatuated with and falling in love with and it's so rare to see a story that has a main character who's gay who has options you always hear about the story where there's that one guy in town who i kind of may like or kind of don't like and in the end they end up being together so it's really interesting to hear that he has options it's empowering in my opinion because i feel like that always happens in books where it's like i have no one there's i have just have to deal with the first person who loves me I'm, and i'm gonna settle that's just not that's not what i want in life you know loved it very romantic and it also talked about life in such an interesting way because he does get an organ transplant the main character is overcoming cancer there's just so many facets to this story that make it wonderful and beautiful i gave it a four star it's not like a new favorite book but it is something that i think way more people need to talk about and way more people will love so please get your hands on this pretty please the first sentence is so that went well next book i highly recommend is full disclosure by cameron garrett so this the main character is bi and kind of figuring out her sexuality and at first people don't really think she is bi because she's only dated boys to their knowledge which is silly, of course, like, you can have a sexuality and be in a quote-unquote heteronormative looking relationship. Like, if I date a guy, people are going to think I'm straight. I am not. I am asexual. So it's very different. So I think it's that is an interesting conversation that happens in this book. But there's also so many fun aspects, like, 
the main character is directing a play, Rent, actually a musical, my bad, a musical. There's a lot of pop culture references in this that make the book kind of a little bit more lighthearted because it does tackle a lot of serious issues. Um, the main character is also adopted and has dads, um, so they talk about that. There's also the element of the main character having HIV. She was born with it and how she deals with it and kind of understanding how our perception of HIV is so different than the reality and what we see in the media. So I highly recommend this. I found it to be educational and fun and kind of heart-wrenching at some times. The romance was cute, not my like absolute favorite, but I just loved the conversation pieces around friendship and love and just knowledge of subjects like HIV and testing people and what they think they know. Beautiful. More people need to talk about this and I would implore you to pick this up. And one of the characters is also gay and asexual, so there's a lot of representation in this book that is fabulous. Let's read the first sentence. As much as I've tried to convince him otherwise, my father still thinks he needs to accompany me to my first gynecology appointment. Lovely. The next book I would recommend is The Love and Lies of Roxanne Ali by Sabina Khan. This popped off in booktube, I want to say when it came out in like 2019, but it's kind of died down. I want to bring up that hype again because this book, literally written so well, it makes you cry, it makes you laugh. The love story was so interesting. It talks about privilege. So this is about a girl who is gay, or she is a lesbian, and she has a more traditional family. So when her family catches her with her girlfriend, they send her away to try and fix her, which obviously is so wrong, so messed up. But I also love how realistic this story is for the issues that some people face, some people in some families want to, f the, to fix the situation, want to hide you, want to correct you, and it's crazy. And it also brings up cultural things, differences between cultures and how pressure is kind of different between people. It was interesting to say the least. It made you, me cry. There was just so much that went on and it's also realistic. It doesn't end on a, you know, tie a bow, everything's beautiful and happy. It really hits home, it hits hard and then it kind of crushes your feelings but then it gives you a little spark of hope like okay maybe things will get better i don't know if i convinced you or scared you away from this book but i really hope everyone checks this out because it's just so touching and i feel like this is something people don't talk about often and it needs to be talked about the last book i would recommend is let's talk about love by claire Kahn. i remember her name yay good job jess so this was a brown girl book club pick for last month. It covers an asexual character and it's just the cutest thing. It's so freaking cute. She is in college and she's just starting to understand her feelings and then a boy comes in and wrecks everything. Because if you don't know, asexual people can have physical attraction. They can physically like people and some of them can be aroused. It just might be the fact that they don't want to have like sexual intercourse and things like that. So I think let's talk about love is a great book to start with if you have no knowledge of asexuality and it is just so cute i also highly recommend checking out the live show me and tahara um i'll link her channel down below too we had a lovely discussion about that book it was really good but it's definitely a great book to read about an underrepresented group of people i also love that the main couple is a black and asian boy it's just cute because i feel like you never see like marginalized groups together you normally see a white person and a marginalized group kind of dating whereas this is an asian boy and a black girl and i just we love to see it man there is a world of opportunities out here so i love seeing new things <laughs> if only we can continue to do that here's hoping okay and then i wanted to tell you a little bit about my coming out story um so I put it in quotations because it's something that I continue to have to do and I think that's the thing people don't talk about when you come out is that you spend the rest of your life coming out really. There's no one definitive I'm here and then everyone knows and moves on. It's like every person I meet, every new person, every person I would be interested in, my family members, every time I like talk to someone it comes up and people have questions and things like that but I found out that I was ace during college for one so I was like in my 20s I just never knew that it was an option and I always just thought something was wrong with me that I didn't like 
doing the deed i was like i'm not doing it right or there's something there was something always wrong with me i was like i couldn't figure out what was happening and i continued to try and i think i kind of caused a little trauma on myself because i was doing things i didn't like and i didn't like get anything out of and it, for me that was really distressing because i am one of those people who is pretty repulsed by anything that involves that kind of stuff so it wasn't it wasn't a fun time growing up and learning that and then i think during college i was just walking down like my school like yard and it must have been pride month and there was all these signs that said you know it's okay to not want to have sex and i was just like excuse me <laughs> and it just clicked i didn't know that some people just don't enjoy it slash don't want it in their life and i was just like i feel so seen and heard and ever since then i've identified that way but i really didn't start telling people until i worked on a project a student film where they were asking queer people to come in and I was like sure I'll do it and at first I feel like people looked at me like aren't you just straight like you what are you doing and I was like well I'm I'm asexual I was a little scared <laughs> but I said it and they were like yeah cool yay and then you know I, they painted the, like the the ace flag on me like the purple white gray black and we had a great time on set just working and it was just really cool to be with a bunch of people who kind of understand because when you are queer or gay it's like weird to grow up in a world where most people assume you're not they they just assume that like oh you're you're hetero like obviously like oh and it's like no <laughs> no i'm not thanks thanks for asking so it was really cool to be with a group of people who really get it even if they're different because there was people who were bi in that group i think most of the people in the group that i was with were bi so but they understood how it felt so that was really, really comforting. And after that, I think I just became more comfortable sharing. Um, coming out to my parents wasn't too hard. They're very open and understanding. I think when I was younger, maybe they just didn't understand what I was saying and I didn't know, I didn't have a word for how I was feeling. So there was a little bit of disconnect. But now that I'm older, I'm aware of myself and how to express myself better. They totally understand and they get it. So I'm very, very fortunate in that sense. And I really hope that you guys can have people who understand who you are are in your life if not i appreciate you and i really love you and i truly truly mean that you are valuable you are an important person you deserve to live a happy fulfilled life and i really hope the best for you comment down below if you need some support and hopefully people in the comments can support you because i know the world can be a scary ugly place but i just want you to know that you are worth the time you are worth the five seconds it takes to type out your little message and i will see you and you are seen and people care for you even though it may not feel like it sometimes i care for you okay i love you fun times fun times so i just you keep doing it and it gets easier and easier as time comes along i haven't had a romantic relationship whilst knowing my sexuality though that'll be an interesting day when that happens i'm a little scared for it, it makes my armpit sweaty because i just you know haven't had good luck with relationships ever fun times that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching i hope you got something out of this either a book recommendation excited for pride month or like maybe some inspiration to come out but only when you feel safe and comfortable obviously please put yourself first it's okay to be a little selfish especially when it comes to something so intimate and so vulnerable as this but i still love you so much give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss any more of my videos and make sure to check out my patreon there are over 30 videos available there bonus videos so maybe check it out my goal is to reach 25 patrons so i can start doing a buddy read with you guys and i think it'll be really fun so definitely check it out if you would like to check it out and support me maybe who knows i hope this video gave you a little bit more sunshine and i'll see you in the next one. Oh, and if you stayed until the very end comment down below this emoji so i know you are the real mvp i love you guys so much i will see you in the next one